Uh, welcome to first course on power systems, module 13. And it will look, in this module, we will look at protection of power systems uh, against uh, transmission line faults and over voltages. And here is our uh, reference book here. So when it comes to protection of power systems, uh, we are looking at uh, protecting it against uh, uh, short circuit faults. Uh, causes of, uh, we look at causes of over voltages and uh, what uh, we need to have as insulation to withstand these uh, over voltages <coughs> and uh, this insulation coordination. So these are the topics that we are going to look at in this module. <coughs> so, uh, you know, we had uh, looked at uh, short circuit faults in uh, previous modules, but here we see that uh, just uh, uh, one side of the transmission line is shown here, uh, and you can see that it has a current and voltage transformers to measure current and voltages. Then there are relays which uh, make the decision whether uh, there's a fault or there isn't. And if there's a fault, then this information goes to a circuit breaker, which uh, opens up this transmission line. So very quickly, let's take a look at a current transformer. Uh, it works on a transformer principle, as the name implies. The primary could be a, a single conductor, as shown here, uh, a single turn. And the secondary has large number of turns, and then it is terminated in so-called load or a burden. Okay, so because of this uh, large number of turns, the current in the secondary is uh, much smaller, and uh, the voltage across this burden could be sensed uh, could be a signal for current that uh, goes into the relay logic. Uh, similarly, we need uh, voltage information, and here we have a, a capacitor divider network, and then for isolation, uh, we have a transformer here. So we can also sense the voltage of the transmission line using so-called capacitor coupled voltage transformer. Uh, then we have relays, uh, and they decide if uh, fault has occurred. And in that case, this uh, circuit breaker should be interrupted. So, so it is very important that uh, these relays, uh, they make the circuit breaker operate when they should, of course, in order to protect the power system. But it's equally important that they, not, they do not operate falsely. Otherwise, there'll be unnecessary uh, power disturbance. Okay. So when it comes to re relaying, there are three things which are very important. One is selectivity. The other is speed, uh, and the other one is reliability. Okay. So as you can imagine, <coughs> all these things are very important. So we have different types of relays. One is a differential relay here. And uh, as you can see here, it could be used, uh, this relay, for a, to protect a generator, uh, a bus, or a transformer against internal faults. Okay. So, so long as there is no internal fault, uh, you can see that in this circuit, uh, there's no current flowing through this relay over here. But if there is a fault, then uh, you know, there will be a net current uh, which will flow and which will indicate the fault, and then this uh, relay can trip the circuit breaker. <clears throat> then we have overcurrent relays. And in, this, in these relays, uh, 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 if, the, if the current being measured exceeds a minimum value, that is greater than the maximum load current by a certain factor, then the relay determines that a fault has occurred. Okay, and uh, it uh, you know these relays work on a delay time basis. Higher the fault current, uh, faster it will operate. So it's a kind of a nonlinear function of the magnitude of the fault current, which implies the larger the current magnitude, shorter the delay time uh, with which this uh, overcurrent relay will operate here. Uh, then we have directional relays where which look only in one direction as shown here. So as you can see here, if the fault occurs to the right of the CT, then uh, you know the, the, the current would be lagging the voltage and the relay would operate in this case. And if the fault occurs to the left of this uh, CT, then uh, the current would actually be leading. And in that case, uh, this uh, uh, relay would be blocked from tripping the circuit breaker. 
Then we have ground directional overcurrent relays for ground faults. As you can see, uh, if uh, the fault were to occur, uh, let's say, within 85% of the line, then this relay would trip uh, uh, you know, instantaneously. Otherwise, there is a time delay as shown here. If the fault occurs beyond this point, then the time involved is larger as shown over here. Then uh, we also have an impedance relay where we, by calculating the ratio of the measured voltage magnitude and the major current magnitude, uh, these bidirectional relays determine the impedance, and hence the name, which is uh, an indication of the distance along the line that the fault has occurred. Yeah. So you can see that uh, if this uh, calculated impedance falls within the circle, then the relay will trip. Otherwise, it is blocked. Then uh, we have uh, so-called pilot relays, where we can communicate. There's a communication channel. It could be through microwaves, or could be, uh, you know, as power line carrier, or fiber optics over here. And so they communicate between two terminals of a transmission line being protected by these relays here. Uh, and, and if fault has occurred that is internal to this transmission line, relays, uh, relays would issue a command. Uh, to, to the circuit breaker at both ends, ends of this line to interrupt this fault here. <clears throat> then we have uh, zones of protection. So if you look at uh, uh, this uh, relay for circuit, circuit breaker A, uh, there is a certain zone one of protection where this relay would operate instantaneously. Uh, in this zone two, it's uh, 20 to 25 cycles it will take to uh, protect so it's like a backup relay for, for zone two, where this zone two may be the primary zone for the zone one for uh, relay here, circuit breaker B. Okay, but for as far as circuit breaker A is concerned, this this length of the line, if the fault were to occur, it's in zone two, and it's uh, slower to operate. Whereas uh, beyond that is zone three, where it may take much longer to operate, anywhere from one to three seconds. Okay, so this way we make sure that uh, there are overlapping zones here, and if, uh, if the primary relay for a zone fails to operate, then there's a backup, backup relay. So this A is the primary relay for zone one, but it's a backup relay for zone two and zone three. And the same thing we can say about other relays here. <clears throat> then we also have relays for uh, protection of generator and step up transformer, uh, just like the differential relays, these are shown here, uh, and uh, which can determine if a fault has occurred. Uh, and uh, the circuit breaker is stripped, the field excitation is removed, and the steam in this generator is vented out here. <clears throat> uh, then we have circuit breakers. So you can think the relays are the intelligence, and uh, circuit breakers are really the muscles, so to speak. Uh, they are the ones that actually interrupt the fault. So they are very large piece of equipment, as shown here uh, at uh, 345 kV, for example. And here we normally use the sulfur hexafluoride gas puffers to, to interrupt uh, these relays here. I'm sorry, I'm going the wrong way here. Right here. <coughs> so... Uh, in relays, what, in, in these circuit breakers, what happens is that these uh, contacts, they part, and uh, which creates an arc, and that arc has to be uh, extinguished, and that's where these uh, uh, circuit breaker, uh, you know, these gas buffers then uh, help to elongate that arc, which uh, uh, eventually, uh, you know, extinguishes. We also have to be careful because these uh, circuit breakers and relays can operate uh, pretty fast uh, within a couple of cycles, and there's always new advancements. Uh, the idea is to make them operate as quickly as possible. So if you have this uh, RL circuit as shown here in a simplified diagram, then uh, <clears throat> after you close the switch, there could be a, an offset, DC offset which you see here, this offset here. So we have to take this into account that not only the 
a, a symmetric current that will flow eventually, but initially there is an as, this asymmetric current because of the superposition of the symmetrical component plus the, the offset component here. So, uh, that offset needs to be taken into account uh, depending upon the, the reactance over the resistance ratio here.